Eric, you uh, write in your book that uh, I'm quoting here, war has always been uncertain, but it has been guided by one logic as well as one set of limitations, that of humans. I want to ask you about an AI-driven war. One of the things that frightens me as I think about it is that linkages uh, in, in the chain of escalation could be tighter. Uh, Dr. Kissinger or other strategists of nuclear war have always feared those tight linkages driving us toward conflict. I want to ask you about that, and I also want to ask you about whether you think AI-driven warfare will focus on machines killing other machines or machines killing humans. Um, we're just at the beginning of the answer to this question. Um, we started with the question of proliferation. So if you assume that AI will eventually be very powerful, do we have a proliferation problem? And the answer is yes, because we and our opponents are all tracking together in a virtual arms race where we're essentially competing and competing and competing to build out this. Now today, those arms are not focused on each other, but they could easily be because the technology is dual use. So that's the first problem. The second problem is you have to have a theory of how war will emerge, AI-enabled war, and we don't really know. Uh, if you talk to the military, and Michelle is an expert at this, obviously, they'll say that the first war is always in space and in communications. It's cutting off the opponent's communications. We saw this in South Georgia and a couple of other conflicts uh, with involving the Russians a few years ago. So let's assume we're gonna have that happen. Let's assume that we survived that initial attack. Now you have a cyber war and the decisions in a cyber war have to be made faster than human, human time. So, so even before we get to the robots killing people, we have this massive set of infrastructure questions about how quickly things attack, who controls them and so forth. When you get to actual automation, the consensus of our National Security Commission was that we wanted AI weapons to be human guided that improvements in precision are welcome because a lot of deaths in war are collateral in the sense of unintended, unintended or innocent victims and that sort of thing, but that wars in the future are likely to be significantly de deadlier because of AI, because of targeting and the, that sort of thing. Um, we look, took a, a, a while looking at this question of command and control, which is what the military would really like. The current command and control systems are so complicated and so poorly built that it's unlikely that in the short ter term, AI can really solve that problem. But the military goal at the eventual, eventually is to have a system that watches everything and gives them alerts. And that makes sense to us. The issue here, all of that is straightforward. And the, the, the thing to worry about is the destabilizing nature of launch on warning. And so what's going to happen in our view, and we say this in the book, is that eventually you're gonna have two sides, both of whom have unknown strengths and unknown weaknesses in their AI systems. One will get jumpy and alert the other that they're about to attack, and the other will actually cause the attack. That's the strange love scenario. That is incredibly destabilizing and it's gotta get addressed now in terms of military strategy. 